Dear students, in this screencast video, we are going to see the topics covered in the fourth unit of our syllabus. The first one is steps that are involved there in the translation, which includes an initiation, elongation and determination. To better understand about the translation, first you need to understand certain terms such as shine dalgarno sequence and what is meant by a transfer RNA, that is tRNA. Then we will look at into the steps that are involved in the translation, that is a explanation or a detailed portion of the translation will be dealt here. Then after translation, some proteins formed will be in a malformed condition. They need to be degraded with the help of specific structures such as proteosomes. So what are proteosomes? What is their role in protein degradation is the next topic. Then we are going to see a list of antibiotics and how they affect the translation process. There is different kinds of antibiotics will be available. These antibiotics will influence the translation process at different stages. Those will be dealt under that particular topic. In particular, we are going to see the detailed mechanism of a pyromycin, chloramphenicol and streptomycin. The last topic that is going to be covered in this unit is the OPRON concept that is regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes and eukaryotes how it is mediated by the presence of OPRON systems there in these organisms. First, we look at what is translation. Translation refers to synthesis of a polypeptide on a mRNA with the help of ribosome. So, this is a simple definition there for the translation process. The RNA involved there in the translation may also be referred as the template RNA. Next, the translation involves the following steps that is initiation, elongation and termination. Initiation refers to assembly of the ribosomes there on a mRNA molecule. Elongation refers to repeated cycles of a amino acid addition based on the sequences present there in the mRNA. Termination is the final step that is related to the release of the protein that have been formed from the sequence of the mRNA. That is terminating the protein synthesis process is referred as termination. Before going to learn the steps involved in the translation process, that is initiation, elongation and termination, we need to understand certain components that are essential for the process to be operated there. One is about the tRNA molecule that is transfer RNA molecule. The other is the knowing some details about what is mean by protein factors and how they affect the translation process. And third one is to know about what is shine dalgarno sequence, what is its significance there on the translation process. In this first, we try to look at the points related to the tRNA molecule. TRNA molecule is the one which is involved there in the translation process mainly to carry the amino acid to the ribosome site and to initiate the translation process. So, this T stands for transfer and RNA is a ribonucleic acid. So, this is called as a tRNA. A general information there about the tRNA is the gene encoding for a transfer RNA in any kind of a living organism is the smallest gene of an organism. Look at here the structure of the tRNA molecule. The tRNA molecule is basically a RNA molecule that forms into a secondary configuration that is a stem and loop configurations that is mainly resulted due to the intramolecular base pairing. Apart from that, if you look at into the tRNA molecule, it will be having a anticodon region which is complementary to the codon that have been present in the mRNA. Apart from that, it is having a 3 dash end that is the position in which the amino acid will be charged there to the tRNA molecule with the help of tRNA synthetases enzymes. Now we look at the other points related to the transfer RNA. It has been shown that the first amino acid incorporated there into the protein chain 
during the process of translation is methionine. That is both in the cases of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In the prokaryotes, there is a slight change there in the structure of the methionine. That is methionine has been modified into N-formyl methionine and N-formyl methionine is the first amino acid to be added there during the translation process. However, in both types of organisms, that is in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the AUG serves as an initiation codon and this AUG initiation codon is being recognized there by a special type of initiator tRNA. That is initiator tRNA is the one in which the n formyl methionine will be charged by the tRNA synthetase enzyme and it takes the n formyl methionine and adds there and starts the translation process. This initiator tRNA is also differs from the one that exactly pairs with the AUG codon that have been present in the rest of the coding regions of the mRNA. That is, the AUG initiation codon is the one which is recognized specifically by a initiator tRNA. Whereas, other methionine related tRNAs are those that can able to recognize the AUG codon that have been present in the rest of the coding regions of an mRNA chain. In the prokaryote, example in a E. coli cell, there exists a lot of differences between these two forms of tRNA. That is initiator tRNA and a normal tRNA. Say initiator tRNA is the one which exactly binds to n formyl methionine and normal tRNA is the one which may just bind to methionine or to any other kinds of amino acids. The initiator tRNA allows more flexibility there in the base pairing. That is the Hubble's base pairing which we have studied in the previous unit. It lacks alkylated A that is adenine in the anticodon loop. You have already seen the anticodon loop there in the diagram. And hence it can able to recognize both the different kinds of codon that is AUG and GUG. Say, sometime GUG can also serve as an initiator codon there in the prokaryotic mRNAs. That is the reason why this initiator tRNA is having a flexibility there in the pairing. The non-initiator tRNAs is less flexible and it can only pair with the AUG codons. Both tRNA are charged with methionine by the same methionyl tRNA synthetase. Already I have told that tRNA synthetases are the enzymes that are binding or charging the tRNA with their respective amino acids. So in this case, the methionyl tRNA synthetase is the one which is charging the methionyl tRNA. But only the initiator methionyl tRNA is modified by the enzyme transformamylase. So transformamylase is the enzyme that modifies the methionyl tRNA after charging into n formyl methionine tRNA. Next, we look at the points related to the protein factors. These protein factors is the next important thing required for a proper translation to happen in an organism. A lot of protein factors have been available there in the prokaryotes. They are commonly referred as a IF, that is initiation factors and EF, say elongation factors and termination or release factor that is referred as a RF factors. You may already recollect the translation as a steps containing initiation, elongation and termination. So, some special protein factors have been involved in all these steps. These are the list of protein factors for the prokaryotes whereas when you look at into the eukaryotes, they are commonly referred as a EIF and EEF. E refers there for the eukaryotes eukaryotic initiation factor and eukaryotic elongation factor. The details of this protein factors could be understandable there from referring there into the Wikipedia web page. The initiation factors involved there in the prokaryotic translation includes IF1, IF2 and IF3 whereas those involved in the elongations are EFTU, EFTS and EFG which is also referred there by a term called translocase. Then the termination or release factors that are releasing the preformed protein chain there from the ribosomes includes RF1, RF2 and RF3. All these protein factors have been 
actively involved there in the translation with the help of energy obtained there from the GTP. That is GTP can be converted into GDP and back to GTP. So, during the release of energy from the GTP, it is used there by this initiation or elongation or termination factor and involved there into the translation process. Now, we look at the points related to the Schein-Dalgarno sequence. This Schein-Dalgarno sequence is something that have been present there in the mRNA. You look at here the Schein-Dalgarno sequence. So, what that have been shown there in the yellow color is a particular sequence that is conserved and consensus to the 6 rRNA sequence. Okay. This 6 rRNA is the one which is in turn present there in your ribosome that is with the 30s of the ribosome. So, shine dalgarno sequence is the one which is present upstream of the start codon that is to the left hand side of the start codon in the mRNA. And this plays a proper bondage or binding of the ribosome to that of your mRNA. So, in a prokaryotic mRNA, there is a consensus and conserved sequence that is of a 8 to 30 nucleotide upstream to the binding site of the first codon that need to be translated that is the initiation codon. It was first discovered by Shine and Dalgarno and it is a purine rich sequence usually containing all or part of the following sequence that is A, G, G, A, G, G, U that is from a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Experiments have shown that these sequences can base pair with the 3 dash end of the 6 dash rRNA in the small subunit of the ribosome that is the point what I have narrated. It is called as a ribosome binding site or shine dalgarno sequence. Its function is it taught to position the ribosome correctly with reference to the initiation codon in the mRNA. The eukaryotic equivalent of the shine dalgarno sequence is called as a Quasak sequence and it has the following sequence in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction.